Yeah, probably in 10 years, more than a half of uh, new vehicle um, production is electric in the United States. Um, and China's probably going to be ahead of that because China's been super pro EV. Um, I don't think a lot of people know this, but like, I mean, China's environmental policies are way ahead of the U.S. Like their mandate for renewable energy far exceeds the U.S. I think this, sometimes people are under the impression that China is uh, either dragging their feet or, or, or somehow behind the U.S. in terms of um, sustainable energy promotion, but they're, they're by far the most aggressive on Earth. It's crazy. I mean, like, in fact, the a coalition of Chinese car manufacturers just wrote the Chinese government to beg for them to slow down the mandate because hmm. it's like too much. They, they need to make 8% electric vehicles, I think, like next year or in two years or something. There's like, they can't physically do it. Um, so China's by far the most aggressive on um, electric vehicles and solar. Um, so, um, but that's a common misperception that they're not. Um, there's one Google search way to figure this out, by the way. It's really pretty straight, pretty easy. So, and in 10, in ten yeah, 10 years, man, I think, yeah, yeah. So ha half of all production, I think, will be EV. I think almost all cars produced will be autonomous in 10 years. Almost all. It will be rare to find one that is not in 10 years. Um, that's going to be a huge transformation. Um, now, the thing to bear in mind, though, is that new vehicle production is only about 5% the size of the vehicle fleet. So you think about how long does a car or truck last, and they last 15 to 20 years so before they're finally scrapped. So new vehicle production is only roughly, one, at, at most, 1 15th of the, the fleet size. So even when new vehicle production, say, switches, those, switches over to electric or to autonomous, that still means the vast majority of the fleet on the roads is not. It'll take another you know, five to 10 years before that becomes majority, the majority of the fleet becomes EV or uh, uh, autonomous. Um, but if you were to say go out 20 years, overwhelmingly things are electric autonomous, overwhelmingly. Fully autonomous? Fully autonomous. So no one will have to touch the steering wheel if there is one? There will not be a steering wheel. <laughs> In 20 years, um, it will be like having a horse. People have horses, which is cool. Um, but so, so having uh, a regular car will be like having a horse. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there will be people that have, that have you know, non-autonomous cars, like people have horses. <laughs> it just would be unusual to use that as a mode of transport. Yes, all right. Now, let's talk about um, the energy piece and rooftop solar and storage. Um, yeah, um, so the, uh, I mean, first of all, it's a <clears throat> important to appreciate that the Earth is almost entirely solar powered today um, in the sense that the sun is the only thing that keeps us from um, being at roughly the temperature of cosmic background radiation, which is three degrees above absolute zero. If it weren't for a sun, we'd be a frozen dark uh, ice bowl. Um, and the, uh, the amount of energy, so the amount of energy that hits the sun, that reaches us from the sun is tremendous. It's, it's, over, it's the, it's 99% plus of all energy that, that Earth has. Um, then there's, 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 there's this energy we need to use to run civilization, which to us is big, but compared to the amount of energy that reaches us from the sun is tiny. Um, so it, it, it's very easy, like it actually doesn't take much. If, if, you, if you wanted to power the entire United States with solar panels, um, it would take um, a, a fairly small corner of Nevada, Texas, Utah, anywhere. Uh, look, you, it's, it, you only need about 100 miles by 100 miles of solar panels to power the entire United States. Um, and then the, the batteries you need to store that energy to make sure you have 24-7 um, uh, power is one mile by one mile. 
It's one, one square mile. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I showed the graph of the, or, or image of this where uh, this is what 100 miles by 100 miles looks like. It's like you know, a little square on the US map. Um, and then one, there's a little pixel inside there, and that's the size of the battery pack that you need to support that. Real tiny. So, Will, you, you talked about 20 years from now, none of us, well, some people will still be using horses or. or it won't be zero. Yeah. But it's so, too rare. So, what will the, the energy piece look like? I mean, what, will there be transmission lines? Will there mm -hmm. be a need? Yeah, I think the, so there's, the, it, it, use of energy can, is roughly divided into three areas. Um, and they're more or less equal um, at, a, at a high level. Um, there's about a third of energy is used for transportation of various kinds. About a third is used uh, for electricity. About a third is used for heating. So if you want to have, uh, and, and then of, of, of the electricity production, call it you know, something on the order of 10%, depending upon how you count it, is renewable, maybe 15%. Um, uh, today, so th that means that there's a massive amount of solar that would need pe need to be produced um, and connected in order to to be fully sustainable. Because fully sustainable means you're tackling transport, um, non-renewable electricity generation, and heating. Um, so that that means there will need to be a combination of utility-scale solar and rooftop scale solar combined with uh, wind, geothermal, uh, hydro, probably some, some nuclear for a while, um, in order to transition to a sustainable uh, situation, um, which means really, for the most part, massive, massive growth in solar. Um, and it's, it's going to be important to have rooftop solar in uh, neighborhoods, um, because otherwise, you're gonna, there'll need to be uh, massive new transmission lines built. And people do not like having transmission lines go through the neighborhood. They really don't like that. And I agree. <laughs> so um, so you, you want to have some localized energy uh, production um, combined with utility. It's, so you want rooftop solar, utility solar, um, and uh, that, that's, that's really going to be the solution from a physics standpoint, but I can't see any other way to really do it. Um, um, when people talk a lot about fusion and all that, but the, the sun is a giant fusion reactor in the sky, and it's really reliable. It comes up every day. Um, <laughs> so if it doesn't, we've got bigger problems. <laughs> uh, somebody asked me to ask you this. We, we talked about workforce today, but they asked me, are robots going to take our jobs, everybody's jobs in the future? Or how, how, how much do you see artificial intelligence coming into the, the workplace? Um, well, first of all, I, I think on the artificial intelligence front, um, you know, I, I have exposure to the very, the very most cutting edge um, AI. Um, uh, and I think people should be really concerned about it. Um, I keep so sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react, you know, because it seems so ethereal. Um, and um, I think we should be really concerned about AI, and I think we should, this is, AI is a rare case where I think we need to be proactive in regulation instead of reactive, um, because I think by the time we are reactive in AI regulation, it's too late. Um, and no, normally the way regulations are set up is that a whole bunch of bad things happen, there's a public outcry, the, the, and then after many years, a regulatory agency is set up to regulate that industry. Um, and there's a bunch of opposition from companies who don't like being told what to do by regulators. Um, and anyway, it takes forever. Um, that, you know, that in the past ha has been bad, but not um, something which represented a uh, you know, a fundamental risk to the existence of civilization. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. Um, in a way that car accidents, uh, airplane crashes, 
um, faulty drugs uh, or bad food were, were not. They were, not, they, they were harmful to, to uh, a set of individuals within society, of course, but they were not harmful to society as a whole. Um, AI is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. Um, you know, it's not, it's not fun being regulated. It's not, you know, uh, it can be pretty irksome. But, uh, you know, in the car business, we, you know, we get regulated uh, by Department of Transport, by EPA, and a bunch of others. Um, and, and there's regulatory agencies in every, every country. You know, in, the, in space, it, uh, we get regulated by FAA. Um, and, um, but, but, you know, if you ask the average person, hey, you wanna, do you want to get rid of the FAA um, and just, like, take a, take a chance on manufacturers not cutting corners on the aircraft because, uh, you know, profits were down that quarter? Uh, I was like, eh, hell no. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think even people who are pretty, you know, extremely, like, libertarian free market, they'd be like, yeah, we should probably have somebody keeping an eye on the aircraft companies, making sure they build a good aircraft um, and good cars and that kind of thing. So, you know, I think there's, there's a role for regulators. Um, that's very important. Um, and I'm against over-regulation, for sure. Uh, but, man, we've, I think we've got to get on that with AI, Prano. Um, and uh, so, so there'll certainly be a lot of job disruption. Um, because what's going to happen is robots will be able to do everything better than us. I'm, inclu I'm including, I mean, all of us, you know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what to do about this. <laughs> um, it's like, the, it's the, like it, this is really like the scariest problem to me, I tell you. Um, and um, yeah, so. I really think we need government regulation here just to, because this is, you know, ensuring the public good is served. Because you've got companies that are racing, that they kind of have to race to build AI, or they're going to be uh, made uncompetitive. You know, like, the, essentially, if your competitor is racing to build AI and you don't, they will crush you. So then you're like, ah, we don't want to be crushed. So, uh, you know, I guess we need to build it too. Um, that's where you need the regulators to come in and say, hey guys, um, you all need to really, you know, just pause and make sure this is safe. And like when, when it's cool and, we're convinced, and the regulators are convinced that it's safe to proceed, then you can go. But otherwise, slow down. Um, and, but, it's long, but you kind of need the regulators to do that for, for all the teams in the game. You know, uh, otherwise the shareholders will be saying like, hey, why aren't you developing AI? faster um, because your competitor is. I'm like, uh, okay, we better do that. Um, anyway, so it's like, I mean, there's like something like 12% of jobs are transport. Transport will be one of the first things to go fully autonomous. But when I say everything, like the robots will be able to do everything, bar, bar nothing. <laughs>